So my research group is mainly concerned with um, auditory processing in uh, humans, and we um, have two, I would say, main research lines. One, one is actually looking at um, processing of lip movements in deaf, uh, in deaf populations, yeah? and how this relates to um, rehabilitation of the cochlear implantation. And the other big research line is um, predictive processing in the auditory system in general. And that's also actually um, basically the, the domain where the tinnitus research kind of falls into. Yeah. Predictive processing in general means um, that we do not just like passively uh, receive the sensory input that we get, but kind of actively engage in, in processing it. Yeah, And this means that we are constantly casting predictions or making best guesses um, what events and um, objects in the environment are actually causing the input to our brain, right? And for this, um, the brain has to form so-called internal models or generative models, as they are sometimes called. And we are trying to develop paradigms to look at that in the auditory domain and actually, um, yeah, also in healthy, pop in normal hearing populations and in also individuals with, with tinnitus, actually, yeah. Well, that's a treating tinnitus um, in our research at the moment is a little bit on a different page. I have to say we're trying, um, kind of trying to switch our focus a little bit away from um, investigating neural correlates of, of the tinnitus perception, which has been the focus actually of a lot of tinnitus research, more into a direction of um, general differences in processing of, of auditory information. Yeah, And we kind of, this is, a, I think, a long-term research program are um, interested in whether these differences actually in, in, in basic auditory processing and in different manners in which I engage with predictions could be actually a predisposing factor um, whether, let's say, after a potentially tinnitus-inducing event like a noise trauma, whether people develop tinnitus or even chronic tinnitus. Yeah? I think this is a, a domain where we have, which we have neglected quite a bit in the past, and that's where our uh, attention is mostly on. With regards to collaborations across disciplines, so obviously um, the domain kind of naturally um, brings along that we collaborate with uh, clinicians. And I think this is obviously a, a good thing also for us basic uh, researchers because it gets us grounded, obviously, also with the issues, for example, that patients have. Um, in terms of, let's say, neurophysiological, neuroscientific models, um, I still see a little bit too much divide among um let's say, the animal domain and the human domain. I think we are kind of sometimes looking perhaps at quite different things. We are um, obviously with, the, with respect to the research subject, they were quite different things, but perhaps also in terms of um, different mechanisms and different aspects of tinnitus. So I think definitely the, the translation uh, between human research and animal research back and forward, this is something that could be improved a lot in future. Ooh, the outlook for tinnitus research in the coming decade. I think that's super difficult to predict, right? Um, I've been in tinnitus research now almost 18 years or so. I um, think we've done a little bit progress, not as much as I hoped for. So I would be, I think, lying if I say in 10 years we will fully know uh, how tinnitus comes along and that in 10 years we will have a treatment. I think that would not be an honest answer. But um, we're trying our best and um, we kind of have to um, be open-minded as well to, to new ideas, new developments and um, yeah, try our best. And who knows, there might be a breakthrough, but which is not predictable at the moment.